from, if I think about it from like a outsider's perspective, so people who don't identify as part of the queer community, um, the misconceptions are that like, it's, you know, there's so many like sexuality to keep up with or like different like I ways of identifying. It's also complicated and I don't understand it or, or like from a, from a business or gym owner perspective, like what am I supposed to do? I don't know how to like, I don't, you know, know how to cater or help um, these people like feel comfortable or feel safe in my gym. And there's sort of like, it's too complicated to address when I think yeah. that is really, you know, basic of, <laughs> of them to like <laughs> you know, say. And it, it just comes down to looking at it from a like human perspective and putting yourself in the, the shoes of someone who doesn't feel safe visiting like uh, a gendered segregated washroom or change room um, mm -hmm. because of their past experiences. So little things like that, or even just like putting up signs in your gym or space that this is a safe space for queer people, um, but then take the next step and call out anytime you hear homophobia in your gym or microaggressions yeah, um, yeah. happen, because those are the little things that make people feel unsafe when they're there. Um, and like, we can, you know, take those steps to, to make spaces feel a lot more safe. And I think that's yeah, that will probably work. But I think <laughs> I remember last year, was it last year? Oh, yeah. yes, it's 2020. Oh, yeah. I think I remember last year, um, there was the issue of, I think, in US about the bathroom stuff for the trans community in US. Mm. I think, I don't know if it was last year or the year before. And so I, I had to like explain like what a transgender person was to the mm. IT guy at the office. And it was mm. not clicking. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was not Yeah, clicking. that's that's frustrating too. Yeah. And then, yeah, like there's a lot of people who don't know really what those, those words mean. Like yeah. they don't know what trans means. They don't know what non-binary means. Like those things and so there is still a lot of education and that needs to happen um as well so um from the business perspective of an inclusive community i'm mm -hmm. assuming that the the gym owner is probably more worried that if he makes this place um inclusive he might lose um a lot a lot of what they call it, gym goers who goes to the what they yeah call? like clients yeah, yeah. that one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I think they would be a bit worried that if they made their gym a bit more in inclusive, like they might lose clients because, you know, most of the people who, who are quite homophobic and who are quite um, mm. all that hate and all that aggression, they are the ones who, who, are, who mostly frequent the place. They are at least the majority of the population. So I think mm. they're more worried about losing money, I guess. I guess so. But like at the same time, you can say you can address that from the other perspective and be like, you can gain, like, say there's like three people at your gym, they're the loudest people there and they all are against, you know, having a um, like washroom or like non-gendered washroom or something. Mm -hmm. But like, what if, you know, those three people leave or those five people leave, but you gain 20 new clients, like, because those people respect the fact that you are respectful of people's gender identification or whatever else. And there can be things that people can do, like have, if it's not possible to have non-gendered washrooms and change rooms, have washrooms that are, you know, um, like separate units that aren't in part of either of those change rooms that can be used for anyone who doesn't yeah. feel comfortable changing in a, in a, change room full of other people like there's tons of reasons to have those in general huh. so it's like if you are worried from a business perspective that you're going to lose people most people a probably won't care i think we put like a little too much on like <laughs> oh what if everybody hates it and leaves yeah. like they'd probably be like a little bit new to them at first it might be like okay like sure let me try this out and then they'll get used to it and they'll probably forget how it used to be you know or like just have one area locker room and then like 
eight changing rooms or eight washrooms. Everybody can go in, change, solo, do their what they need to do. And it doesn't have to be about like men's room, women's room. You no. Know? Okay.